coding is just so damn cool. It's a skill that I've been wanting to learn for a very long time, but just haven't been able to get around to it. I feel like I'm already really late to the party, but you're never too old to stop learning. Besides, with this Justin Bieber haircut, could probably pass as 16. I spend so much time on the computer these days, and I'm sure you do too, using different programs that you probably don't even know how they work. But I've always been crazy curious. How does Google Chrome work? How do these websites work? How does Microsoft Word work? How do games work, right? What's the basis behind these massive internet companies like Facebook and YouTube? How do they work? Now I've tried to sit down and learn code many, many times, but every time I start about 15 minutes in, I think to myself, this is going to take a very long time and it's gonna take a ton of dedication. Why would I waste my time with this unless this is something I'm going to be doing for the long term? And that mentality, so dumb. I have this goal-oriented mentality where if there's no possibility of reaching this amazing goal, then I'm not even gonna try it. And uh, that's really limited me in the past from doing things that I'm just curious about learning, doing things for fun, and just enjoying the process of learning without needing this external thing that I want to achieve sometime in order to actually get work done. And you're probably like this too. You start off learning something new or starting some new challenge in your life, and you're doing it for fun because you enjoy it, and all of a sudden you get so goal-oriented that the joy of the learning just goes away. I'm curious of so many things in this world, and I know that idea of the jack of all trades is, I don't know, looked down upon or something, but at this point, I don't really care anymore. I'm gonna do something that I'm curious about and I wanna learn about and have fun with, and I'm gonna have fun. And I think that's good advice for you too. If there's something that you've also been wanting to do for a long time and you just haven't gotten started on it, get going and don't worry about the goals just do it because you're curious about it and you want to learn and you want to have fun so i think it's time to stop talking and start coding this challenge begins now All right, so I have been coding now for roughly two hours. And this is absolutely insane. Uh, I didn't really notice this curriculum part before, I just got into it, but there are a bunch of different curriculums here. There's in here, HTML and CSS, JavaScript, like I don't even know what any of these things really mean, but I started off with the first one, Responsive Web Design Certification, and I saw that this is supposed to take 300 hours and all of these are which is absolutely insane i was not intending on spending 300 hours on one video i just uh, that's insane right but as i started to go through it it's been what two hours now this first one is made up of eight different sub curriculums and I already finished the basic HTML in HTML5, and I'm halfway through the basic CSS. So if I stick at this rate that I am of going through this particular curriculum, I mean, I would be done the CSS in, in less than three hours, and then we would have 6, 9, 12, I mean, all together, 20 hours total? There's no way, there's no way. Maybe the project here at the end Okay, that's gonna take a long time. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I'm definitely going to go through all of this curriculum. We'll see how long it takes me, and then uh, we might have to think again about the projects, but we'll see. 
All right, I just wanted to give that a little update and uh, I need to take a break. <laughs> All right, that's it. See you later. So today is the second day of the coding challenge that I have started. And this morning I woke up and for about one hour, I finished off the rest of the preparatory lessons on free code camp. So basically the only thing I have left to do are the final five projects. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not sure how long those final five projects are supposed to take, but right now after going through all the lessons, I am at less than eight hours. At this point, however, I do not feel prepared enough to go in and start coding my own things from scratch, which is exactly what the projects are supposed to be. I zoomed through the lessons, but I think I need to go back and really hardwire this new language into my head. And when I feel prepared, I'll get started on the projects. So let's keep this going. It's time to review. All right, so the way these projects work First, we're using a website called CodePen.io, which I'd never heard of before, but uh, now that I've gotten used to it, I really like it. Right, so right here, as you can see, this is the first project, and each of these user stories are basically the, the rules that you have to complete uh, in order to create a successful project. So, in total, for this, there were 10. So using CodePen.io and this particular script, they can check whether I fulfilled the user stories that I'm supposed to for this project. And as you can see for this one, uh, we were supposed to create a tribute page and I have run all the tests and I have 10 out of 10. That took me about 45 minutes. Uh, so it's time to move on to the next one. All right, so I have officially completed the coding challenge. Uh, I finished all of the lessons on Free Code Camp and the projects in 18 hours and 35, 32 minutes. 
So I certainly learned a lot throughout this journey, not just about how to code, but how to organize my time, how to be more productive, and how to actually learn efficiently in a way that suits me. So all in all, this was an incredibly fun challenge. When I first got started, I was addicted to learning how to code. I spent hours and hours learning all of these new ideas, all these new lessons, and I didn't want to do anything else. And what's crazy about that is I was learning CSS and HTML, something that I really wasn't planning on learning at all. So one of my regrets actually is how I jumped right into coding right away on Free Code Camp without knowing what language I should have learned first. Nonetheless, it was a great experience and this will give me kind of a foundation if I want to do another coding challenge for a language like uh, Python. So here are some takeaways that I learned from doing this challenge. So the first thing I want to talk about is that I think for me the best way to learn is by seeing a full outlay of somebody else's code. And I really didn't learn this until the end of this entire coding challenge because Free Code Camp doesn't really work like that. You learn through these isolated lessons where everything is contained on its own and not in a bigger project. So you don't really get to see the grand scheme of things and the way it works within other elements. But by the time I got to the projects, they had example projects that I could look at and see all of the code outlined. And when I could look through that, even if it was hundreds of lines, I could start to put the pieces of the puzzle together. You know, I could see uh, this is related to this and this is related to this and this is happening because of this. It just felt a lot more natural to learn that way instead of these isolated ideas. So I think for the future, if I choose to learn another programming language, then I'm gonna look for resources that maybe go through an entire project's code and, and one by one outline exactly what each of those components of the code do. And luckily enough, there are a bunch of video tutorials from Free Code Camp and other resources that, that pretty much do exactly this. So from now on, I'm going to learn using those types of videos as opposed to uh, the free code camp website that's just my personal preference the second thing uh, i want to talk about is how incredibly mentally taxing coding can be so because it's very mentally taxing you need to take breaks and intervals while i was learning to code i noticed that i would be finishing up a section maybe i'd have 10 lessons left uh, and instead of taking a break then when i was incredibly mentally taxed i would try to rush through the 10 and finish that particular section. And what do you think ended up happening? I didn't learn those lessons that well, so by the time I was going back and reviewing those lessons, uh, they seemed completely foreign to me. And that is so disheartening when you've already learned something and the following day or a couple days later, you barely remember seeing it at all. But I think if I had taken a break at that time and came back mentally fresh, uh, I would have learned the content a little bit more deeply. All right, the third thing I want to talk about is the idea of mastering a few concepts before you move on to the next concept. Now, I didn't do this while I was learning. What I did was I learned, I went through all 200 lessons, one after the other, after the other, after the other, without reviewing some of the things that I had already learned. And this was a really bad idea because what really kept me going during that first learning phase was the curiosity to learn the next concept. But if I run through those 200 lessons, by the time it's time to review those things that I had learned, I didn't have that much motivation. Reviewing something versus learning a new concept, uh, it's just not as fun. So I kind of just burned through my motivation. But if I had learned 10 lessons at a time or even 30, and then gone back and went through those and, and reviewed those, and maybe it would have been a little bit boring at that time, but, it would have kept my motivation high to move on to the next section afterwards. So if I had gone back and reviewed every 10 to 20 lessons and really mastered that material, then the next lessons I learned, I'd be able to say, okay, this is a little bit different, but it's somewhat related. You know, I could see how they're used differently or I could see how they relate together because I would have really remembered what I had already learned. But this wasn't the case for me. So by the time I got to the 100th lesson, and there was some similarities between the 100th lesson and the 56th lesson, I couldn't make that connection because I could barely even remember what I had already learned. And this idea of building on top of what you've already learned to discern when you should use a certain idea or a certain code and when you shouldn't, that's what real learning is. So in the future, I'm definitely gonna make sure that whatever I'm learning along the way, I'm going back and I'm reviewing as I'm doing it so that 
I can learn the newer material a lot faster. All right, if you've made it this far, that concludes this coding challenge. Uh, it was a great challenge. I love it. I highly recommend that you try it out as well. If you enjoyed this video, uh, drop a like down below and subscribe for more challenges just like this. All right, I'll see you in the next challenge.